Today we'll talk about the male reproductive system. We're going to talk about the testis, the primary organ uh, of the male reproductive system, the production of sperm through the process of spermatogenesis, the different components of that, the different cells within that, and then uh, the function of the different cells and the unique features of those cells uh, of not only spermatogenesis of the germ cells but also somatic cells uh, in the seminal tubules and in the testis itself. Then we'll talk about the accessory sex glands, the prostate, uh, seminal vesicles, and we'll talk about the X current duct system. As sperm are produced uh, in the seminal tubules, they go through the uh, through the mediastinum area of the testis or the testis through the efferent ducts, uh, ep ductus epididymis. Then it goes through uh, the ductus deferens, uh, ultimately to the ampulla through the uh, prostatic uh, uh, ejaculatory ducts down into urethra and out through the penis. Thank you. The male reproductive system is composed of the primary organ, which is the testis that we see here, the epididymis, the ductus deferens, goes to the semen of vesicles through ampulla area there, a small portion of the, of the ductus deferens, and then it goes to the ejaculatory duct and the prostate. This is the prostate here. Urine's coming in through the urethra and through there. So you have ejaculatory ducts where the seminal fluid as well as the sperm come through through your urethra, through the urethra of the penis and then ultimately ultimately out. The glands of the male reproductive system is the seminal vesicles, the prostate, uh, as well as above all urethral gland, which is located right at the base of the penis. If we look at the human testis, we're able to see a fairly large structure here. The epididymis is right uh, over here, and the ductus deferens. This is what they cut for in the case of vasectomy. The ductus deferens goes back up into the pelvic region. Also coming through here are the blood vessels, uh, the spermatic cord. So we have the arteries and veins uh, going to uh, feed the testis is located there. Here also we see the tunic albuginea is reflected back. And it's, the name of it, uh, Tunic Abigini, is White Coat. And you can see how it gets its name as this uh, parietal layer is pulled back into there. So inside there is a series of tubes. You can see the little tubes there. They're similar for tubules. These are the tubules that produce the sperm. And you can see where one's deflected back in through here. But it empties in this really testis tubule uh, complex. And then from there it goes to efferent ducts, and from efferent ducts it goes to a single ductus epididymis of the through the ductus deferens, ultimately back up uh, to the prostatic uh, ejaculatory ducts. <coughs> Here we see a fetal testis. Uh, we see the seminal for tubules. We have um, primitive uh, cells, which ultimately become uh, Sertoli cells or nurse cells, and you have the germinal cells. You have the spermatogonia already located uh, in the little fetal testis here. Uh, in adult, we have a, a nice thick capsule, the tunica albuginea, uh, that we saw as reflected as a white coat, and then you have a series of tubes. These are the similar tubules, and lady cells are in between the tubules that we see. There's always a blood vessels and septum of connective tissue that goes through there. In on slide 165, we can see a host of seminiferous tubules uh, located uh, in through here, uh, some blood vessels. Uh, on the surface of, uh, in the capsule area, you will have blood vessels that surround the testis, and here we can see these big blood vessels uh, that facilitate uh, more of a cooling of the blood before it goes deep uh, within the testis itself. So we see the capsule, uh, you can see some veins here when, with uh, uh, the little valves in there, and these are arteries in through there with uh, lots of center for tubules. You can also see lymphatics. This is a lymphatic vessel there as well. Similar type thing, we see lymphatics, we can see blood vessels. Uh, here we can see a, a nice representation of how uh, the, the testicular artery surrounds 
of the outside of a test is to cool before it goes uh, deep within. Similar for tubules, but a host of different uh, germ cells uh, within there. Here we see some of those germ cells. Some at the bottom are for are medium sized. The largest ones are the primary spermatocytes, which are located kind of in the middle. And then the smallest ones are the spermatids, which are more shaped like a sperm. You can see connective tissue and nervous tissue running through uh, uh, the testis. So if we look at the different cells, we see fibroblasts. There are different fibroblasts in the connective tissue there. We have Sertoli cell. Sertoli cell uh, is a nurse cell. It stems from the bottom to the lumen, uh, and the germ cells are kind of in its pocket along the way. Typically, they are pear-shaped with a very uh, distinct nucleolus and a euchromatic nucleus. There's another one there, there's another one there, there's another one there, there, and there. Uh, lots of Sertoli cells that we see there. The myoid cells are the cells that surround the tubule and mark the limit of the tubules. These are myoid cells. And a spermatogonia. Here we see spermatogonia of different types located uh, in, in through there. These would be uh, spermatogonia in through here, primary spermatocytes uh, in in there. So if we look at the semitubule, we see the most primitive cell, spermatogonia, located on the base. Uh, above the base, you have the uh, uh, primary spermatocytes. Primary spermatocyte. Here's a sertoli cell. There's a sertoli cell. And then above that, you have spermatids. So as uh, the cells differentiate, they move toward the lumen, and finally the most mature form, the maturation phase spermatids, are located at the lumen to be released. Leydig cells in between the tubules uh, produce uh, testosterone. Now spermatogenesis has three major events. It has spermatocytogenesis, which is a mitotic activity. It has meiosis, and it has spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis is the differentiation from a round cell to a cell that looks like a sperm. And that occurs to spermatids. Uh, there's no counterpart to this in the female reproductive system. However, like uh, uh, spermatogenesis has uh, spermatocytes, there's also oocytes in the female reproductive system. And of course, uh, there's ogonia as well as spermatogonia uh, in the two sexes. Uh, where we have mitotic activity. Mitotic, uh, meiotic, and then differentiation are the two different things that we see. So the spermatocytes are the big ones in through here, and the spermatogonia are the more primitive ones that we see along along the base. Here you can see one there in spermatocytes, you can see there. And then we have the spermatids, and the spermatid starts out with a spherical nucleus and becomes elongated, and then finally it becomes bullet-shaped, where it has a mitochondria around the middle piece, and it's got a principal piece, and it's got the, uh, the acrosome uh, developed uh, on the apex of the sperm. So you have acrosomic vesicle forming there, forming a little cap, and then uh, you can see a development of process. And here we can see the whole scheme of things, uh, you start out with uh, uh, you, you start out with um, a round cell, and here you can see the acrosomic vesicle forming. We see that it, we call that Golgi phase because that's the Golgi apparatus that we see right there, and that's uh, there it is again, and it's causing the acrosomic vesicle. Then we see the cap phase whenever the the, the acrosome forms a little cap, forms a cap over the nucleus and then we got the elongation phase we get the manchette uh, here and here we can see the manchette associated with elongation of the nucleus condensation of the nucleus getting darker and then the final uh, phase is the maturation phase where these have uh, the annulus there that moves down mitochondria moving around the tail uh, for to make the uh, ultimately the mature spermatozoan and here we see this mature spermatozoan with mitochondria around the tail, bullet shape, the acrosome uh, in this location uh, as well. So this is the middle piece and the principal piece of the maturation phase. And you can see uh, here where mitochondria has moved in around, around the tail. So if we look at the spermatozoan, we see some various interesting things. We got the nucleus, the most important part. And then we have a host of membranes. We have the nuclear membrane, the interacrosomal membrane, 
the outer acrosomal membrane uh, and the plasma membrane and here we see the acrosome so there's a host of different membranes that are located in, the, uh, in there uh, so that's the nucleus and then you got the metal piece where it has mitochondria located around it we can see the mitochondria here and then as we go down we look at the principal piece you can see there are uh, the axoneme that goes through there the nine plus two central pair and also there's dense fibers these dense fibers here give rigidity uh, to the sperm and keep the sperm uh, uh, vibrating um, as opposed to a, a real long arc uh, in in its beat so we have uh, microtuber doublets central pair uh, radial spokes the different components uh, of the of the of the flagellum. So if we look at the different uh, cell types uh, in a real histologic section, we see spermatogonia. These are spermatogonia located uh, at the base. Uh, there's some uh, light and some dark spermatogonia. Different types of spermatogonia. Uh, also, we have primary spermatocytes, and there's actually a couple types of spermatocytes. Uh, you can see that the chromatin is different from this guy and that guy, and this guy is one cycle length younger than, 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 than these guys. So these are still primary spermatocytes. And then we have some secondary spermatocytes. Uh, secondary spermatocytes are intermediate in size. There's a secondary, 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 secondary. And these are larger, almost twice as large as these spermatids. And so these are spermatids. Secondary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids. So you go around spermatids and then you get uh, elongation, maturation phase spermatids, which ultimately will be will be released. In addition to that, we have Sertoli cell nuclei. There's one here, one there, one there, one there, uh, one there, and there's a one, a typical shape, the pear shape uh, that we see of uh, Sertoli cells. So if we look at uh, this slide, we see there's mitotic activity, that is, uh, cell division by mitosis uh, of the spermatogonia and that's spermatocytogenesis uh, that occurs of spermatogonia. And then there's secondary spermatocytes that we see there and a host of meiotic uh, phases. These are meiotic, they're not mitotic, this is meiotic. Uh, and then the result of that are secondary spermatocytes which then divide uh, to give you a spermatid. So you go from primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes and then uh, spermatids and these are associated with different stages of a cycle here the most mature cell is around spherical nucleus in four that nucleus begin to get elongated more bullet shaped five very elongated down through here and six is just about to be uh, uh, put out uh, and uh, released into the lumen so again the immature cells spermatogonia are here spermatocytes in the middle of spermatids are toward the lumen that we can see. If we look at this elect, uh, light micrograph, we see fibroblasts, we see endothelial cells, myoid cells, we see spermatogonia. There's some light spermatogonia and dark spermatogonia. We also see spermatocytes. Uh, and there's two generations of spermatocytes. You've got these primary spermatocytes as well as these guys are spermatocytes as well. Also in this particular one, you have two generations of spermatids. You have uh, 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 sefer uh, those with spherical nucleus and the acrosomic vesicle forming and then you have those that are bullet shaped elongated spermatids, late spermatids uh, uh, which ultimately will be released. So we had spermatogonia, two generations of primaries, two generations of spermatids ultimately be, to be released. Here's a nice Sertoli cell nucleus pear shape with a big distinct nucleolus. But there's another one, Sertoli cell nucleus here, another one there, another one there, 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 um, another one here, another one here and here are Sertoli cell uh, nuclei. If we look at this high voltage electron micrograph of the horse testis, we can see spermatogonium on the base, spermatocytes in through here and here. And we, here we even see a, a cytoplasmic stalk a cytoplasmic bridge between two primary spermatocytes. And then here we have a Sertoli cell nucleus, bizarre uh, shape of the nucleus, and we have uh, elongated mitochondria that project out. Here you can see that Sertoli cell is really a tall cell 
reaches from the base to the apex, uh, and it sends out these branches, which are really like bed sheets that surround uh, the developing uh, germ cells. So we look at this area with a higher magnification, we can see the manchette. The manchette is a corset of microtubules here. This is a tail developing, and this is an annulus that's located at this area, the head up through there. And here we see uh, a younger one. This is a maturation phase, and this is a, 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 a Golgi phase spermatids, and you can see the Golgi apparatus right there. Goji, and we can even see the centriole giving rise to the developing tail. There's a proximal distal centriole. Distal centriole develops into the tail. So there's a Golgi apparatus, and we can see here little acrosomic vesicles uh, developing from that. Uh, if you see this uh, electron microscopic view, here's a Satoy cell uh, with its cytoplasm, uh, euchromatic nucleus, lots of nuclear pores. We looked at this already before, very long uh, uh, microtubules. And then these are spermatocytes. And we know that it's spermatocyte because they have the synaponema complex right there and right there. These are spermatocytes that are located there, Satoy cell nucleus, Satoy cell cytoplasm and spermatocytes. Now, between the, the, the tubules is the interstitium. Interstitium has Leydig cells, and here we see one cell, there's another cell, and in the humans it has this rackly, this uh, arenchy crystalline structure, a crystalline structure uh, that uh, we don't know exactly what it's doing in there, it's just uh, in there. Uh, here you can see the basal lamina of this tubule in through there. This is the basal lamina of the Satoya cells and the spermatic gonia and the, the myoid cell layer that goes around there. In this aged rat testis we see a macrophage and we see that the uh, an enlarged basal lamina of the Satoya cell, the myoid cell right here, but the Satoya cell has got a very large uh, basal lamina. Aletic cells of a horse we can see as a host of smooth endoplasmic reticulum associated with um, a side chain cleavage uh, and then also the final stages of testosterone production. And here we can see uh, the side chain cleavage actually occurs in the, in the uh, mitochondria that's located right in your cholesterol is produced in, in, uh, in a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The gap junction between adjacent cells, a big nucleus, and, uh, and you can see some lipofusin granules. So sperm are produced by the tubules, and then they go to a kind of straight portion uh, through the reedy testis. This is a metastinum area which has connective tissue and reedy tested tubules. Reedy tested tubules go from the seminiferous tubules uh, uh, to uh, the efferent ducts, and the efferent ducts. Uh, the, it's a counterpart to the overduct in the female uh, reproductive system. So the reedy testis into the efferent ducts or ductuli efferentes, uh, and then that goes to a single ductus uh, epididymis. Here we see the efferent ducts has a trucellated cell just like the overduct does in the female reproductive system, and also it has a scallop appearance because you have varying heights of the cell. Here we see the scalped appearance of the efferent ducts and this is a contrast to the uniform height of the uh, simple columnar or, or pseudostratified columnar epithelium that you see in the epididymis. Also we see uh, stereocilia, very, very long microvilli and their sperm uh, in the lumen. So the efferent ducts and the ductus epididymis in through there. So in the ductus epididymis, we see a lots of stereocilia, uh, which increase the surface area. There's also a swirl of smooth ER that we see there, and lots of Golgi apparatuses in the epididymis. Not sure why they're there. Again, tunic abegini reflected back. Uh, we had the epididymis and then the ductus deferens. So here we can see uh, the, uh, the ductus deference with lots of smooth muscle and um, uh, epithelium uh, on its surface. And we can see that here in the spermatic cord. So lots of smooth muscle and the lumen in through there, uh, arteries and veins going through here and some muscle too, uh, the cream master muscle, which 
pulls the testes up. Here's the ductus deferens with the uh, contents, uh, aluminal content in through there, veins, arteries, different things. We can see a little arteri artery, uh, maybe arterial uh, vein uh, in the spermatic cord, big nerves in through there, and lots of smooth muscle with the ductus deferens. Another view of the ductus deferens, a very big smooth muscle. There is some connective tissue, but it's mostly muscle that we can see. Uh, here's the uh, pseudostratified columnar epithelial cells with, with stereocilia uh, in, the, in the ductus deferens. We can see again the muscle layer. They're different as inner uh, longitudinal, outer longitudinal, and inner circular muscle uh, that's in the uh, ductus deferens. If you look at the ampulla uh, uh, of the ductus deferens, it's a swollen portion and it can store sperm there temporarily. And then we get the semo so fluids from the semo vesicle. Semo vesicle looks like a honeycomb uh, kind of shape as a secretory component. So this is a semo vesicle ready in through there. Uh, this uses perm come through mixed with the prostatic fluids and then the semo vesicle washes it out and forms a little cap. Semo vesicle honeycomb shape, if you looked at cells, tall columnar cells. Uh, and then we have the prostate. The prostate as more uh, connective tissue uh, than glandular tissue as a contrast to the semo vesicles have more glandular tissue. So we can see a lot of connective tissue in through there, but there are some glandular. Sometimes we have these concretions that are located uh, inside there as well. So you can see the secretory epithelium of the, of the prostate makes a lot of citrate associated with diluting out and uh, buffering uh, the, uh, the the seminal plasma. As you go through the uh, prostatic, uh, you, there's ejaculatory ducts, but there's also the prostatic urethra, which ultimately uh, the, the ejaculatory ducts runs into. And so now you've got a urogenital tract from there on out uh, with the urethra taking the sperm out. So you go from the prostate, your jacketory ducts, and then uh, here we can, uh, your urethra, and the urethra continues on into there. Also, there's a bulbal urethra muscle uh, gland that's located right in, uh, right in here. And what that fluid does, uh, there's no lumen, much lumen for storage. So whenever you get an erection, you start yielding this fluid. This is what caused the leaking of uh, the erect penis is because uh, this thing is, has no storage capacity. As soon as it squeezes, it starts to ooze out, uh, and it actually washes the urine out. The purpose is washing the urine, getting ready for ejaculation should it occur. It's very interesting fluid. Acidic acid would not dissolve it, which it dissolves most uh, fluids, not that. Uh, also, you can take it and kind of stretch it, kind of like cervical mucus. You could stretch it a little bit. You know, you usually can't stretch a liquid, but you can. Uh, here is kind of interesting, clear liquid. Um, and then that brings us to the penis, very thin skin out through there, very thin connective tissue. And you have these three cavities. Two of these cavities are a corpus uh, carbonosum and there's a heavy band of connective tissue around there to resist uh, the pressure that can develop inside and then also there's the urethra and then there's a corpus spongiosum so the spongy erectile uh, tissue around the urethra that's very important because when you have the erection the urethra will want to close but you actually have erectile tissue and you can palpate this on a erect penis you can palpate this part uh, sticking down uh, and you can uh, that holds the urethra open uh, during, during ejaculation because otherwise you'd have an erection and be squeezing that squeezing that down and if we look at uh, slide 277 we can see the cross-section of a human penis you can get very thin skin and through their connective tissue uh, the spongy carbonosis tissue around the urethra and then the erectile carbonosis tissue with a thick band of connective tissue that resists. What happens is 
uh, nitrous oxide is produced uh, and it, it causes a vasoconstriction of the uh, large arteries that feed uh, the carbonosa tissue. The carbonosa tissue enlarges with blood, the penis enlarges uh, as you increase. As you increase the, the flow because of the contraction of the artery uh, muscles, um, you fill up the flow and also uh, the there's a muscle that squeezes the base of the penis against the pelvis and that reduces the, the volume inside there and in, do, in doing so it increases the pressure that's why you have to have uh, this thick band of connective tissue around there uh, to resist stretch because whenever you pull down on the on the pelvis uh, it's going to increase the pressure and it will it would stretch out, bloom out if it if it could, but it can't because the uh, the size is restricted by that uh, connective tissue that we see there. And then you have uh, different types of epithelium uh, in the urethra. In the urethra, it could be um, stratified columnar, it could be uh, columnar, uh, it could be uh, transitional. Different types that we have there. So we see transitional. Uh, located right in there. More questions today from the didactic test of previous years. Question 21. Which of these cells is are found in both the stomach and the intestines? Into endocrine cells or gentophon cells? Yes. Absorptive cells with brush border? No. Goblet cells? No. The answer is A. Which of these organs functions uh, with a blood portal system? Pituitary? Yes. Kidney? With the nephron? Yes. Pancreas? With the pancreatic uh, uh, astner cells and the rectum with the uh, islet cylinder hand? Yes. The answer is E. Um, uh, the colon uh, is characterized by luminal surface studied with openings of straight tubules of the loop of the cryptolubricant yes high density of goblet cells seen in small s s higher than seen in the small intestine yes a major GI tract function of storage of feces yes the answer is E which of the following organs have the specific blood barrier brain yes Testis? Yes. Adrenal cortex? No. The answer is D, uh, as we see there. The salivary glands protect the oral cavity from bacterial activity by uh, production of lactoferrin, which binds iron needed for growth of bacteria. Yes. Uh, production of lysozyme, which hydrolyzes bacterial walls. Yes produces IgE, immunoglobulin, into saliva, which binds bacteria. IgA is the one, not IgE, so the answer is D. Which of the, IgA is in there, but not IgE. Which of the, these uh, organs have binary origin? Skin, yes, you got the epidermis and dermis. Pituitary, uh, yes, you got it from the oral cavity, you got it from the brain. Pancreas, uh, no, all from the endoderm. So the answer is D. Which of the following uh, is, are, functional features of a liver? Cleaning the blood by the Cooper cells, yes. Secrete uh, plasma proteins for blood clotting and major osmotic protein, which is albumin in blood, yes. Mixing of portal and arterial blood. Yes, it does mix in the, in the liver. The answer is E. So these are the ones that we have 